everybody. Welcome to Evening TV. I'm Evening Ransom. And today I want to talk to you about gaslighting, the five tactics of gaslighting using real life examples. I'm going to take an example from when my whole like discard situation was happening. Okay. And these things all happen within this like small little period of time. One thing I noticed is I noticed it seems like everyone is mad at me. Like it just all of a sudden seems like everyone is constantly mad at me and I don't know why. But I would ask them and everyone would always deny it. And I would tell my husband, you know, it seems like your mom's mad at me or it seems like my parents are mad at me. It seems like my brother and his wife are mad at me. And he would always be like, well, don't you think of all these people, if you're having problems with all these people, it's you and you're being paranoid and da 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 just very disorienting. Well, as it turns out, he was definitely infusing toxic poison into all these relationships. But for the longest time, he just kept denying it. Everyone kept denying it, saying that, that there was nothing wrong, that I was imagining it. Telling me that I was being overly sensitive. That's a big one. So that's one way that it happens. Then here's another way that it happens is he'll take over the things, things that I was doing competently. Like I, I handled all of our finances, all of our bills. I handled all our bookkeeping for our business. And one thing, the one concession he made for me after I had this heart attack was, why don't you take some time off from the office? And he took over all the finances. Well, of course, because he was going to start embezzling the money, that was, that was a big reason for it. But also it was just this way of, it was, it was a way of taking away something that was like I was valuable, that I was connected to our, what we were doing, that I was, you know, engaged in our life. And it was just sort of like made me superfluous and made me feel insecure and all this stuff. On the other hand, I took him up on it because it was the one and only gesture that he made to take care of me. And I, I needed anything that I could get as far as care went. And so I, I needed that, but also psychologically, I wanted to feel like he had, he was taking care of me. And so it was the one and only gesture that he made. So I took him up on it. First thing they do is they disorient you. The second thing they do is that they'll, um, they'll incapacitate you. They'll t take over something that you were skillfully handling like, and make you seem like you were not valuable, that you were, you know, completely, so you lose your confidence. The other thing is they'll do this, this thing called the shared psychosis where he'll make up like a fantasy world, make it so that there is some kind of common enemy and you've been the enemy now for a while. So it feels good to be, you have a common enemy together with him where he has you on the same team with him. And he puts you in the role of being the protector. And what this does is it creates for you this sort of weird paranoia. But in, in my case, how this played out was that he told me that, that after I had this heart attack, the fact that he hadn't heard from one of his friends really bothered him. And he, he felt, that this person was kind of snubbing him or whatever. And he wanted me to write a letter because I was more of a writer. So he wanted me to write a letter and just kind of tell this person that, that his feelings were hurt. And so I did that. And then what he did is he turned around and acted like, see what I have to put up with? You know, he acted like it was not his idea. He you know, put me in the role of protecting him and then acted like, I was being hysterical and that it wasn't even his idea. And then that person in the her family, which was like, like some of my oldest friends, he, this became evidence of my craziness. This became evidence of, of how insane that I was acting, you know, see what I have to put up with now, see what she's like. And of course this person was narcissistic too. And so her being accused of doing anything wrong, was already a huge affront. I mean, the, you know, the fact that I was standing up for what he said she did wrong, which he knew because he was so he was you know he knew how to trigger someone who was that kind of a narcissist. So he he told me to, to say something that would be especially offensive to her. He understood her her thin her her way that she would be thin skinned more than I did. So that's that's how that one works. And then fourth thing that they'll do they'll abuse and misuse information. So how this went down was that when he was getting ready to abandon me, he had, he, he used, he pulled out this thing. I took, when we first met 10 years earlier, I had just come home and I told my, and I said to my parents, I said to my mom that I had this strange, I couldn't remember my, in my childhood. And I was wondering if she could 
you know, help me figure out why I couldn't remember my childhood. Help me piece together some, help, help me piece it together. And she got immediately really offended and acted, acted like um, I was accusing her of something. And it was just, it was just her reaction was just a shock to me. So I felt rejected and I felt like, you know, really disappointed by that. And I uh, obviously stuffed it right away and, you know, tried to backpedal and, you know, act like I never even asked the question. But the, when he and I went out, on our, when I met him right after that, this was on my mind, and so I confided, I told him about this, I told him about this thing that happened, that I just came home, and I felt like my mom had kind of rejected me, that I, you know, had told her that I was having, I didn't remember things from my childhood, and I thought that she would be willing to help me, and instead she acted really strange, like, you know, like she didn't want to know about it, she, I, that um, if I couldn't come back and just be happy and, and fine and, and making her feel good about herself and everything that she wished I didn't even come back. And I always felt really rejected. And yeah, I told her, him this. He stockpiled that. And 10 years later, he went to my mother and father and told them that I was having flashbacks from my childhood. And that my thoughts about that I have these missing memories from childhood and that I had thoughts that I had been abused in my childhood. And this was the cause of all this depression and I, he made it sound like I had this ongoing, at the time, current issue where I was talking about my missing memories from childhood because he remembered that that would be a trigger for my parents from 10 years ago and made it sound like it was a current thing. And sure enough, it worked like a charm. He triggered them into believing that I, I'd been you know, harboring this all this time and I was still talking about my missing memories and then I was going to come out blaming them for some kind of abuse and, you know. The final part is abuse by proxy, which is where they either get other people to abuse you or they get you to do something that's socially unacceptable and then that crush down from society, you know, cracks down on you. So, you know, of course he had all kinds of ways that he was facilitating my getting abused by everybody around me. So gaslighting, that's how it kind of works. Is it's just sort of this way of disorienting you from your environment and lying to you about how things are going, you know, that things aren't happening that really are happening and you're not seeing things accurately and, you know, making you feel like you're crazy. And, you know, there are different types that this will happen. I mean, there's, you can see like really clear examples when this will happen, even if it's not a narcissist or sometimes when someone's trying to hide something. If there's an addiction going on or if there's an affair going on or some kind of something like that, people are trying to hide what they're doing, they'll just blow, you know, like, you'll find, you know, someone have alcohol in their breath, and you'll be like, or uh, money missing from the bank account, or something, and they'll just boldly, boldly deny it, you're, you're, you, I don't know what you're talking about, or that money wasn't there, or, you know, just completely tell you a different reality, a false sense of, you know, false reality. Those are, those are really clear examples of how ga gaslighting can work. And, of course, it comes from this movie from the 40s where, this um, person uh, was trying to get an inheritance by making this woman think that she was crazy. And what he would do is he would turn down the lights and move pictures around and then tell her that it wasn't, that she wasn't seeing what she was seeing and making her feel like she was absolutely going crazy. And so that's how it got the term gaslighting. In the comments section, I'd love it if you'd share with me what tactic of gaslighting have you seen the most? Which one's been used against you or have you actually used?